Live from the Mission Bay Conference Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at Google Cloud Platform Live. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Yeah, it's, it's actually their second, John. They, they did a little one six months ago, but the demand was so high that they had to go ahead and do another one. They've obviously got online presence and, and some great keynotes, you know, really talking about, you know, cloud as a transformational thing of the same scale as x86 and Linux, um, and then virtualization and now public cloud, but really the interesting conversation that has really been going on really since the beginning of this year is containerization and really, having containerization really unlock the potential of what cloud computing is all about and helping uh, companies and customers get from using cloud to do what they've done before differently to actually thinking a way that they do application development, deployment, and delivery using basically clusters of compute resource, networking resource, and storage resource. So really the data, I think the line from the keynote was the data center is the computer, not a collection of computers. Yeah, and the comments here we're getting on CrowdChat, go to crowdchat.net, G, uh, D, uh, GPC, Google Cloud Platform Live, is basically uh, Google's strategy versus data, how do they get the winning formula? Our analysis, Jeff, from the keynotes is very clear. Google's got a very brilliant strategy in how they're laying this out. They're going after the developers first. They're going to move quickly by subsidizing a large scale infrastructure. They don't even really talk about the enterprise other than the fact that they want to win at large scale, targeting large scale global enterprises first and developers. It's almost a bookend strategy. Win the developer community and go after the premier high end clients and then go to the middle ground at the beginning. So, completely different approach than Amazon, a much more orchestrated approach. It's clear from the keynote that you're hearing about integrated stacks, auto scaling, SSDs. A lot of the announcements are table stakes with other clouds, but it's clearly a bookend strategy. Win the developers with goodness on development of tooling, with containers and platforms of service and large scale infrastructure. They use words like fleet of servers, fleet of applications. Yeah, the one, the one slide that keeps coming up over and over that they said was part of the motivation of going here was that the you know, the continual, I think Moore's Law was mentioned at least six or seven times in the keynote, that the Moore's Law impact on the continuing decrease of price of hardware um, and infrastructure was outpacing the decreasing pricing um, of the cloud services, the early cloud public services. So, real benefit to the users of cloud services to really apply more pricing pressure to drive that down, and as Dave Vellante loves to say, you know, when does the marginal price of compute at this type of scale really approach zero? Certainly way up, well below most companies can do on their own and, and just continue to drive this massive scale. They had a great video of their data centers, really driving continuous innovation in the data centers. So, you know, it's to everybody's benefit when there's this massive competition going on to deliver more, better, faster compute storage and compute to people to use in new and different ways. And we have um, some things clarified on the keynote. Uh, Google was uh, claiming that they were the first app platform as a service product in the market. Um, certainly we reached out to the Twitter sphere and uh, James McGovern at Red Monk, Monk Chips, and of course folks at Salesforce all chimed in and said, <laughs> no, that's not the case. Force was the first 
platform as a service, and then Heroku was second, which is now owned by Salesforce. So, truth in crowds, Jeff, so we've got to clarify that up, and we're going to continue to fact check that, but I think Google's claiming, I mean, hell, if you're going to go down this far, let's just say IBM was the first pass layer with the mainframe. So, um, for all you geeks out there, I'd love to get the trivia going. I'm claiming that IBM actually was the first pass layer with the mainframe, so you're all wrong uh, on the internet. Uh, well, of course, we got it covered here on theCUBE. Jeff, my take quickly from the keynote is certainly very humble, Google, very geeky, very cerebral approach, but clearly laying out the strategy. And a couple of bullets I see that are going to be kind of secret weapons for Google is not only some of the integration in the stack, but more importantly, the interconnect. Google interconnect is a secret announcement, it's very nuanced, because having the back end peering relationships between enterprise takes out all the uncertainty and risk of the, what I call the Netflix problem. As we all know with the Netflix, you're at the beck and call of the service providers who can throttle your packets. This is the net neutrality problem. Google is going head on saying, hell, we'll just build our own peering relationships and allow you, Google Cloud customers, to essentially create your own peering relationship going on with, with Google Cloud. So, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of exciting announcements. We're going to get into the analysis with a lot of thought leaders here inside the Cube. And again, you can hear the hallway buzz. It's going crazy. So we're going to be here all live. Go to the CrowdChat, crowdchat.net, GCP Live. We're going to be taking questions there. Our new engagement container containing the conversation. Log into the container and be part of the conversation. And we'll be right back with our next guest, our first guest here live in San Francisco. At the